Another interesting uh, shader in Cinema 4D is ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion creates a little shadow in the intersection of the object in the corners that you can see. We have two type of ambient occlusion. If you're going to this render setting, in a render setting, make sure that you are a standard because we are explaining a standard material. In a standard material, in a effects, here we have an ambient occlusion. This ambient occlusion is given to all of the <clears throat> scene for the scene. If you make uh, interactive render in a high quality, you can <clears throat> resize it. Now, as you can see, this is an ambient occlusion. It gives a little shadow at the corners like this. But as you can see, we have two objects and no material. It, uh, in this type, you give the <clears throat> ambient occlusion to render setting. We have a little shadow. Uh, for be uh, for better compare this, uh, I prefer to render it in picture viewer. Holding render to picture viewer. This is with ambient occlusion. And go to render setting. You can turn it off or delete it. Then again, render to picture viewer. You can see the difference with, without. With ambient occlusion, we have a better render. It creates a shadow at the edges. It's very simple. So it gives the whole thing. But if you want to add ambient occlusion to the specific object, you have to use a material shader. For example, I want to give a ambient occlusion just in this object, not the whole. It's very simple. Find the object, go to the material, create holding your mouse, create a simple new standard material, and in a standard material, in a color, in a color, uh, let's change a little bit the color to uh, explain an interesting, important thing. Give the this, for example, color to the this object. <coughs> Double click to material and in a texture, we assign it as a texture. Click on here. I uh, explained it before and in. We reach to the effects. In the effects, I want to explain ambient occlusion here. First effects here. <clears throat> assign it. And as you can see, because it's a new texture, it gives to all it's overwrite actually the color okay if you select it you can see the ambient occlusion better here <clears throat> it's a shader that gives you to all object to sing that you have to render it don't forget it so holding your mouse and again interactive render now you can see we add ambient occlusion just to this object but what happened it's completely white and I don't like that. For example, we have a texture. We want to keep my texture here. So it's very important in mix mode. You have to make it to the multiple. And now you can see your texture. Any color that you want. This is a base texture, base color. Mix into ambient occlusion. That's it. Okay, I bring it to completely white to better see the ambient inclusion. <clears throat> so don't forget that to, oh, to mix in this texture shader to the, your color you have to. If you click to ambient inclusion, you can see first thing, you can change the color. Okay, for better understanding the ambient inclusion in here, let's uh, go to another scene to better understand that. Here, so you have a scene. We have two uh, objects that are um, beside of each other. 
<sighs> and I want to add the ambient occlusion to this cube. Double click, material, the color is white, it's not important. Go into the texture, in effects, and make the collusion. And just assign this texture to the disk cube. Interactive render. Now you can see ambient occlusion. <clears throat> make the quality of render at the highest. And now you can see ambient occlusion here. Okay, let's, and as you can see, the ambient occlusion is given to cube in this in the corners and also in the intersection with other objects. We don't assign ambient occlusion to the sphere, but because a sphere is on this cube surface, this is surface, it's given to that. It's because of this object, these settings of the collusion cells, shadowing only. If you tick that, this ambient collusion will be disappear. Just assigning these corners. To better see the ambient occlusion, it's very important to understand the self shadowing only. It means it just create a shadow for that object that we assign ambient occlusion to that, not with inter conjunction with other objects. To better see the ambient occlusion, the default color, you can change the color of that, is a black and white. To better see that, we turn it to the very nice red to better see where ambient occlusion is assigning here and here. To better see that or you can give another color it's a gradient from complete red it's going for fade to other color that you assign or you can load preset <clears throat> the minimum ray it's zero it means if please uh, begin from the zero of that corner to anywhere that you want if you want um, the maximum ray length it depends on your object size for example if you give it a lower number you can see a little rates in length of the this or if you make a higher number we have very dense ambient occlusion so we can go in here and right click to uh go into the uh <clears throat> i explain the accuracy minimum uh, sample and maximum sample in a with an image that's very simple accuracy is quality of your actually um <clears throat> uh, amid occlusion and you have to define the number to render time uh, in a simple language the minimum uh, sample is a sample of the amid occlusion of here at the maximum length and the um, important number is the maximum samples the maximum samples are the sample of uh, the amid occlusion of here as you can see we have a noisy sample if you increase the number of samples we for example have a more quality and be careful about your render time as you can see we have more smooth and nice sample <clears throat> If you want to more contrast between the color of the ambient occlusion, you can increase the number of that. Now you can, we have more sharp and more contrast. Nice. Right click, right click to bring them back. Uh, you, you learn self shadowing only. You can simply invert the direction of that. Invert the direction of the. <clears throat> I mean the collusion in here you can invert it uh, evaluate transparency is very important we add another standard material and give it to this sphere and bring the sphere at the center and double click on a sphere I will be explaining it more don't worry 
uh, make on transparency and as you can see we have transparent object here in a transparency or yeah in a transparency make it the glass or water yeah uh, in a brightness decrease the number of the brightness yeah no that's nice this is nice okay uh, the transparency means uh, if we have a transparent object actually we have to less ambient occlusion here for better understanding that It's better to give trend because the ambient occlusion is assigned to the, this object. We change the ambient occlusion sitting up there. Uh, first, render this ambient occlusion with without evaluate transparency and make it to the <coughs> uh, render rendering picture viewer. This is without evaluate or calculating the transparency. It does not calculate the transparency. Close it. And in this case, evaluate transparency. And now you can see we have no ambient occlusion because the light is passing from its evaluate the transparency. It understands now it's a transparency and we don't have any shadow here. You can see it. It's very easy uh use a sky environment <clears throat> okay let's delete that and this uh environment <clears throat> what is that if you are in a standard uh be careful about that if you it, if you are in a standard render setting you can see the sky simple sky here in a sky i assign um new standard material and give it to the sky i explained them before and in a sky you can double click and add a simple gradient to your texture and in a gradient we don't want to in this direction going to uv in this direction and to better define that i give a nice color yeah you can right click and <clears throat> invert it you can see this in the sky <clears throat> okay i assign the uh, environment in here if i render it as you can see we have our simple ambient occlusion if you go into the ambient occlusion of the settings <clears throat> now here let's turn on use the sky environment and what happened here? now you can see uh, it's defined. You can also give this amid occlusion uh, to the sphere also, sphere texture. And as you can see, because we have the active use environment in the settings, we can turn off the reflectance here. We activate use or not. We activate use environment in ambient occlusion using sky environment. You can see the grid in the of the sky on your texture. It's maybe useful or sometimes not. You can just see the texture of that. Actually, it's reflect. It's mm, copy the uh, environment texture to the object that you assign that environment. Okay, this is all sitting about ambient occlusion. It's very easy. And of course, it's very important and useful. You can delete your sky or other object. And let's talk about a little about difference between the number of the lengths, maximum lengths, accuracy. You can see there, for example, we have a uh, minimum level of the sample we have very noisy and bad things or you can see normal this image is in the help of the software you can see uh, the accuracy if you 
<clears throat> we have a higher number of accuracy, of course, we have a higher number of the render time, or it's depend on your powerful system that you have. Sample, sample, you can see we have a very nice shadow at the corners, but what's the render time? It's very bad. But if you have a powerful system, you can uh, make the accuracy at the higher number, sample at the higher number. For example, sample in this number. Nice and smooth render, but of course, you increase your number of your render time. See this image and you can see the uh, balance between the numbers. <clears throat>